What's up guys, I'm back here and today I am driving to Chuckwalla Raceway here in Desert Center in Southern California. Now, this is a three hour drive for me in San Diego and on the way, gorgeous, gorgeous views going through the mountains. There's like a special way you can take that's probably about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes more than a traditional way, but the traditional way usually gathers traffic around the morning time, so I just took the back way. Totally worth it, awesome, awesome views. Now I'm over here to test audible traction control for a BMW S1000RR, one of our sponsor guys here. His name is Rashan, cool guy, and uh, we're just gonna have him race the files here for audible traction control, finalize this stuff so we can finally get it to you guys. But this is how stringent it's been. We've been testing this on our own personal bikes, our own shop bikes for months now, and now we're taking it over to the track, and we're also testing it on a couple other bikes as well. So we wanna make sure this is 100% ready for you guys to take and implement your bikes with no bugs, no problems, no issues. We don't want anyone to be testing that is a buying customer, let's put it that way. So I'm gonna wrap up the last leg of this journey right now and uh, I'll see you guys at Chuckwalla. Sean here, he's gonna be the guy that's testing the audible trash control with his, was it 2021? Yeah. 2021 S1000RR, but this thing is like an amalgam of a million parts. Been a part a million times, and now we're working on the audible stuff. So let's see what she does. We got the tire warmers on here. Got some 91 in here, fresh tank. We'll see what we can do. We're on a practice session and he just clicked off a 153. We're using a transponder here that communicates directly with the Chuckwalla office and it's an official timing um, transponder here that they use here and you can click the laps off basically on the app itself. So 153 is a good start for his personal best is a 150. We haven't done anything yet. He's just warming the bike up basically, just getting in the getting in the mood here and then getting uh, in the time in the get in the mind frame basically and he needs to stretch a little bit. Get loosened up, but 153 is a great start. A little bit of cold tear. Yeah. I probably drop it a little bit. Drop it one pound. Yeah. All right. So what are you trying to do now on the bike? Uh, get a little more more warmed up, and then uh, get below 53. Okay. The goal right now is to get the bike a little more suited for the track, a little more warm right now, so the tires should be a little more stick stuck to the track. Get below that 153. Personal best is a 150. <laughs>
All right, how was that file? Oh, I can feel it. <laughs> what are you feeling that's different from the last file? Way more, it felt power, more powerful. I've come out of turns bringing the wheel up, even with the 1541 gearing. Um, and I could definitely tell that there was a change to the traction because uh, I, have, I was bringing it down just a little bit more than okay. what I had it set to. And if you, if you feel more punchy coming out? Yeah. Okay. Definitely, yeah. That's good. So do you think that's a positive change? Oh, 100%. Okay, good. Good, so A plus on that one. That's our, our second file, second one. We got three files to test here. The other one's gonna have some other goodies on it. I'm not gonna tell him about it. I like to actually let him try the stuff and then ask him about it. <laughs> kind of well, quiz him after good. he tries it. <laughs> All right, see so we beat 53 here. Hopefully. Again, yeah, still a 91 pump here. 52.3. Oh, yeah. nice. We're proven. 52. Consistent 52, so. Nice. Should be good. Consistent times, it's nice. All right, we start pushing on it now. And then with the uh, with the audible traction control, like what are you noticing that's better or different than how a traditional traction control was? Um, right now, like right now, I'm noticing that I can safely lean over and still be on the gas, exiting the corner, and not feel like my not feel like my bike is cutting down or cutting the throttle. Um, like so you said, it's giving you a consistent, consistent throttle. You're, yeah, you get power throttle. anywhere you want it, basically, no matter the lean angle. Yeah, I can stay in the throttle no matter how much I'm leaned over, and the traction is doing its job. up for the day here and Rashawn was running a consistent 152 no faster than 152 though of course we have some older scrubs in the bike we have a hot day out here and it's a track day and not a race day and of course you can explain the difference to people yeah so like my uh my track day pace was a lot it's usually a lot slower than what, what it normally is but after today working with troy i was able to get uh at least two to three seconds faster with the files that we're using um which is a super big win for me yeah, you're saying 55, 56 was your average uh, track day pace. Yeah, 55, 56 is like my average track day pace. Might throw in the occasional 54 in there if I get a tow from someone a little bit faster. Now, but uh, being that close to my race day pace is a big accomplishment. Now, when you um, when you feel the audible traction control, is it better than the regular traction control and why? Uh, yeah, by, by 100 miles, uh, the audible traction is way better than the regular traction because it's not cutting the throttle while you're in the turns and making you feel like you're gonna crash. Uh, I'm able to stay in the gas all the way through the turn. I'm able even to modulate it a lot more coming out of the turns and not have that sensation that I'm about to crash or the bike's about to bog down. It smooth, it's smooth all the way through. Yeah, and you kind of hear when the tire's giving out or it's the end of its life yeah. cycle. Yeah, so I'm able, that's what I was saying when I was able to uh, modulate it on the buttons, I was able to add more or add less traction or subtract traction now, out of the uh, three files that we tried today, you liked the second file. Why did you like the second file more than the first file or the third file we tried? Uh, the second file felt 
like I was getting more power and uh, even though the audible track show was good to begin with I felt like the second file felt a lot better and I never felt any interference with it I felt like uh, I was really able to get on it um, and then the bike just felt planned the whole time minus the suspension right more of like a one-to-one -one feel almost like yeah. you don't feel like there's much intervention whatsoever even though it's still there yeah exactly so i think what we'll do is we'll have the file for you on next weekend of race day we're leaving you with the can mr12 we're going to see if you can break your personal best on a race day which your personal yeah. best on a race day right now is a 150 here at chuck yeah. which is a very fast time actually uh people are breaking to 140s it's, it's insanely fast but 150 low 150s is a fast pace just for you guys at home no yeah so hopefully i, I break down to at least a 149 I'm at a, sitting at a 150.3 right now, but I think with uh, Troy's help and Brentoon, uh, I think we'll be able to do it. And I think you're getting chased by Declan, right? Yeah, I was chasing Declan and he and uh, having him help me. Uh, super fast dude. So. And for the people who don't know who Declan is, who is Declan? Uh, Declan races in the Australian SBK uh, up in Spain. Uh, super knowledgeable, super fast, been racing since he was a kid. So uh, he's super helpful. Good lines to follow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hard, hard pace to match. Yeah. yeah. He runs like 147s and I wasn't far off. So, so I think that'll be it for today. Um, we're going to let R Rashawn over here do some victory laps, some uh, <laughs> some hero laps. Some we're going to do some wheelies down the back straight. I'll get some video of. We're going to pack it up and get out of here. Wow, so that was quite a day. Uh, pretty tiring, pretty tired at the end of the day here, and I didn't even race. So I can only imagine how Rashawn's feeling. Got some awesome feedback on the traction control. I think this is ready to push out to customers. We've had just awesome feedback from all of our testers on it, including our own personal bikes, the uh, 23M1000 and the 23S1000, which actually respond a little bit different year to year and actually model to model. So we've actually accounted for all that as well, the tire sizing, uh, diesel fueling, there's a few other things that mix with the throttle as well. So we've got everything kind of sorted out for this to launch. And I think as Rashawn said, like the audible traction control, the cylinder suppression rather than the actual throttle cut is a lot more responsive, uh, has better feedback to the rider itself, uh, and it allows the rider to actually give better throttle and be more confident in those, or coming out of those turns and finishing a turn. Um, also allows you to hear the, the end of your tire's life cycle, if you're using, relying too much on the trash control, um, something else is going on. It kind of gives you a lot of great aspects. So I think it's a good add-on feature for those that are on the track. But for the average person, let's say you're just uh, cruising around the streets most of the time, uh, maybe on the track one time a year, maybe it's not for you, but it is cool to, to hear, you know? It's pretty awesome to hear the audible trash control while you're ripping through gears. So who knows? Um, anyone can use it, honestly. And like we were saying before, tire sizing, is so important when it comes to traction control. I, I don't think I drove that home enough on the track there, but one guy didn't have the traction or the traction control set for his tire sizing, change of tire sizing, and it was an absolute mess out there. I mean, absolutely no power came out of turns, issue after issue, and people just say, oh, I'm gonna go to a 190 to a 200, or I'm gonna go from a, you know, a 50 profile to a 60 profile. Let your tuner know, um, and if your tuner can't account for it, we can. Uh, for many bikes, not just the you know BMWs, but of course we're talking about the BMW right now. Now on the BMW, it's that important to the point where even Rashan, he had different tires he threw onto it on one session, not today, but earlier when uh, we started working with him, and he didn't know how important it was, and he said, man, the bike's just not running like it used to. And uh, we asked him, will you change? He said, oh, he went to a different tire size, bam, that's it. So tire sizing, guys, that's why we asked him on the questionnaire. So important, and it's only important to those that lean the bike, you know, over like 40 degrees, you're gonna start feeling the, where it really starts cutting in and out on you when you really try to lay into it and finish up a turn. But that's how important that stuff is. Just wanna let you guys know it is 100% important, it's needed, and it's something you need to let your tuner know, or if you're, if we're your tuner, you definitely need to let us know. And. With the handheld, of course, you can store multiple tunes, which means you can do multiple tire sizes. If you have a different bike, let's say a CBR, and you need to change your sprocket, that bike, the quick shifter will stop working on like the Triple R, for example, if you change the sprocket size too much. And we can account for that, the traction control on that bike, with tire sizing, everything. So it's very important, guys. So everything's pretty good, and uh, I think that's it. I think that wraps up the day, and I'm ready to go home and fall in my bed. So I think it's going to do it for this one, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.